What's the room temperature? It's currently 32.5 degrees and the wall mounted type is off. Turn on air conditioner. Got it. Turning on the wall mounted type. Decrease the temperature. Okay, cooling down the wall mounted type. Switch off air conditioner. Sure, turning the wall mounted type off. Hi everyone. I hope that introduction was enough to let you know what you're going to see in this particular video. Few weeks ago, I posted a challenge on how to design IoT and I wanted you to contribute to the system design so that I can review that. Himanshu had created a pull request with this particular design. I'm going to review this particular design and I will also explain the same diagram with my own transition and I will also let you know what can be improved and what is missing and things like that. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. I'm going to assume the cloud platform which we are going to leverage is going to be AWS cloud and I have a Wi-Fi connection at home where I have an air condition installed with an IoT hardware device something like Raspberry Pi embedded within this particular device. So I'm assuming that there is a hardware control board which is already equipped in the hardware. We are going to create a mobile application or a mobile client and we are going to see how the backend is going to be designed within the AWS infrastructure. We are going to expose APIs to this particular mobile application. So we are going to create an API gateway, which is Amazon's API gateway, which in turn is going to be connected to Amazon SQS and SQS is going to trigger a Lambda. If you ask me why SQS is being leveraged here, can we directly connect from uh, API gateway to the Lambda? You can definitely do that, but you can add SQS to add some resiliency inbuilt within this whole flow. What if the Lambda application resulted in a failure response? and you want the user to trigger the request again. In that case, you can definitely leverage SQS and you can retry stuff based on your response code from the lambdas. That's another reason I think Himanshu has used SQS here, which is a good thought. So from SQS, we are going to trigger a lambda function. The lambda function is going to persist the metadata of what the user is going to trigger into a DynamoDB data store. And it is also going to call an IoT core service. So this is AWS's IoT interaction layer where you can use iot core to connect to different devices and you can get responses from them so we are going to use dynamodb from the lambda to store some metadata information and from the lambda to the iot device we are going to use something called as iot core which can connect to your device applications here assume that we have a raspberry pi installed within the hardware and it's going to get the response back from that device since we have used an air conditioner, we are going to leverage features which are specific only to the air conditioner. So as a part of this flow, the user, let's say, is requesting for the temperature of the room. For example, when I showed in the demo initially, I requested for the room temperature. So this flow will request the room temperature from the Lambda to the IoT core layer. And IoT core knows that the air conditioner is off. However, using the hardware interaction board, which has sensors inbuilt within that, so you can definitely get the climate sensor or the temperature sensor to get to know what is happening within the room and you can get the response back from the IoT core. You can push that into something called IoT events. So IoT events is another service from AWS using which you can interact with different AWS services. You can connect to, for example, we can connect it to a Kinesis Firehose so that you can store whatever event is coming in into a data store like S3 and you can use that to archive information. You can use it to query information for analytics purpose etc using athena from the iot events what we are going to do is we are going to trigger a lambda from the lambda we are going to store the metadata information into the dynamodb because when we requested we know what we requested and when the response came back we can store the state of that particular response inside the dynamodb database so that we don't have to retry if something happens for the response Let's say there is a timeout and we did not get the response within a stipulated timeout. We can trigger a Lambda to go and fix those stuff. So you can leverage DynamoDB streams to trigger Lambdas if there are any timeouts which are happening for this particular end-to-end -end flow. 
Once that is done, we are going to get the message and push it into SNS. So Himanshu has mentioned here as SNS. SNS can connect and send email notification or uh, mobile notifications into your mobile device. However, we want to connect it to the application, right? So in that case, I would have leveraged SQS because using SQS, you can push that message into your mobile specific queue. But then how will you um, register each of the device into SQS, right? So that's the next question which arises. And that's why I think Himanshu had leveraged Amazon SNS so that you can push a notification and the notification can send the response back to the mobile client. One another alternative what we can do for this particular architecture is instead of having this as an asynchronous flow, you can have a synchronous flow embedded by leveraging the response from the IoT events and you can have a timeout embedded so that you can just give a response error or maybe you can retry on your own. We can also integrate this whole API gateway into the Alexa enabled devices like Eco or maybe Alexa device itself directly. Most of the apps these days support a unified way of integrating with IoT devices. So if you had seen earlier, I was able to connect my Google Assistant with the ThinkQ app from LG. So Google Assistant has a plugin which you can leverage to connect to the ThinkQ app so that you can get the same features what the app provides into the Google Assistant by default. Some things which were missing from this architecture was the monitoring aspect of this application. I would add CloudWatch for monitoring the logs and raise alarms if there are any failures or if we want to retry some things. And I will leverage Amazon X-Ray to do distributed log tracing. So what if I want to trace what happened to my request, right? If something went wrong. So I can definitely leverage Amazon X-Ray for that. Also to keep things secure, I'm going to leverage the Amazon KMS so that you can encrypt your data when you are storing it within the Amazon DynamoDB or even with S3. So you can leverage your own keys to store or encrypt the data. Finally, since it is all exposed to internet and you have a lot of internet connectivity, we can leverage the AWS Shield to protect our account or our services from denial of service attacks. This is one way of designing a system for an IoT device. There are n possible ways of designing your system. If you have a different thought and you think that might fit well, do raise a pull request in this particular GitHub repo. I will leave the link for that in the description below. However, thanks Himanshu for providing this architecture and I hope a lot of people would have learned different kinds of ways in which you can interact with IoT devices and how you can retrieve data from IoT and then show that in your mobile application or your web application. I hope you found this particular video interesting. As always, if you like the video, go and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.